My name is Douglas Hunkel. And I'm Ashley Hunkel, and we serve in the hospitality ministry. Hello, my name is Sandra Moss. I serve in the Kids Zone ministry. I serve on the teaching team for adult classes. I also serve in the communion ministry. Hi, my name's Wendy Bryant and I serve in Kids Zone. My name is Walt and I serve in the small groups and also on Sunday mornings doing greeting offerings. Hey, my name's Kevin. I serve on the worship team here at Weirton Campus. Hi, I'm Sharon. I volunteer in hospitality and the nursery. My name is Adam Kreppel and I serve Crossroads as a drummer on the worship team and a sound guy for the worship team. The thing I love about serving is the opportunity to meet wonderful people, to find out about new areas in the church and ways that we serve our community. I just like the opportunity to, you know, meet new people. It's, um, it's more than just coming to church, serving and leaving, you know, it gives you a reason to talk to new people. We've made a lot of friends through serving in the past year and a half. Seeing the difference it makes in the kids' lives. Yeah, seeing them come out of their shells in learning about Jesus and opening up and accepting Him into their lives. The biggest thing about serving for me is the relationships. I feel that serving is a way to give back to the church. What I like about serving is being part of something that is bigger than me and bigger than everybody that is serving together. And to have an opportunity to change people's lives just through the gifts we were given. So to be able to to make music and uh, to just get people excited about worshiping and just draw people into to the church. Serving at Crossroads has really improved my relationship with God because God has used these many opportunities over the years here to grow my faith and to grow my abilities. I think it's the people that we have connected with through serving that have such a good relationship with God, they've really uh, helped guide us to where we are now. I feel like I'm doing my part to, to serve God's kingdom. It's made it deeper, truthfully, for me, um, because honestly, the Holy Spirit moves, and um, it's really a blessing to be able to bless other people. I think it keeps you closer. I think it keeps you in tune, and it makes you uh, makes you more in tune to what He wants you to do in, in serving for Him. The biggest impact it's had on me would be that it's really taught me how to trust God. So if you would have told me a year and a half ago that I would be playing drums or even running sound for that matter at the church, I'd have told you I was crazy. But I just felt the call to do that and I just felt that that's what God needed me and um, He provided for me. I mean, He. He gave me what I needed to serve when I didn't think I had it. Well, welcome to Crossroads. It is great to see you. My name is Andrew, and I'm so glad that you're here. Uh, I want to begin today by telling a story. Uh, a few years ago, uh, my parents, my dad and my stepmom, took us all on a family trip. Uh, all of the kids and all of our spouses. Uh, and so there was about nine of us total in one house uh, for a week. And one of the family activities that was planned was an escape room. Let me explain what an escape room is. Uh, basically, you and a group of people pay money to be locked inside a room together. Uh, and you have a time limit, like 60 minutes or so, uh, to solve puzzles and clues uh, to escape from the room. And I just want to say right now that whoever came up with this idea has a twisted sense of humor. Let me describe some of the personalities that are in my family. Uh, you've, you had myself and my wife Lauren. Uh, there was my parents. My dad is a surgeon. My stepmom's a nurse. Uh, my brother is a musician. Uh, his wife is an artist, and English is her second language. Um, and then my stepbrother, he's an engineer and a pilot in the Air Force. Uh, and his wife, who was with us, was at that time about six months pregnant. So there was a wide range of personalities uh, locked inside of this tight space. And I thought, there's no way we're going to make it. But surprisingly, we came together as a team, as a family. We each found a role and a part to play, and we communicated. It wasn't easy, but we got through it, and we escaped with just a few minutes left on the clock. Afterwards, when we left, I was commenting to Lauren how impressed I was with each person. 
Each person found their role and their part to play. Uh, my dad was really good at unlocking difficult compartments. Uh, Lauren was really good at math puzzles. My stepbrother could pick up patterns and different colored symbols. And as I was reflecting on this, Lauren interrupted me and she said, and you, Andrew, did a great job of telling everyone what to do. <laughs> Some people say it's being bossy. I prefer the term organizational leadership. <laughs> we are in a series today called Gift Wrapped. And we've been talking about how you and I, as followers of Jesus, we have special spiritual gifts that God has given us for his mission. And just like my family had to work together uh, doing different roles to escape, uh, we, in the family of God, we have a role to play. Uh, we have a part to play in this body. And so for our discussion today, we're going to be looking in the Bible at uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Uh, if you need an extra Bible, there's ushers who'd be happy to give you one. I encourage you to have a Bible open or uh, the Bible app open because we're going to walk through multiple uh, verses in this uh, lengthy passage today. But let me give you some context. If you're not familiar with the Bible, uh, 1 Corinthians is a letter that was written by a follower of Jesus named Paul in the first century. Paul wrote this letter to a group of believers living in the Roman city of Corinth. Uh, Corinth is located in modern-day Greece. And when Paul wrote this letter, he had a lot to say, a lot of encouragement, a lot of teaching. And in chapter 12, he talks about spiritual gifts. He talks about our role in the church and in the body of Christ. And we're going to look starting at verse 12 today. And in verse 12, Paul introduces a metaphor to describe the community of believers. He uses the metaphor of a human body to compare to the church and to the body of Christ. Uh, so let's start uh, by looking at 1 Corinthians 12, verse 12. Just as a body, though one, has many parts, but all its parts form one body, so it is with Christ. Here's the metaphor. For we are all baptized by one spirit so as to form one body. That's a spiritual body he's talking about. We were all given the one spirit to drink, even so, the body is not made up of one part, but many. Now look at verse 15. He's going to describe different body parts as a metaphor. Now if the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. Look at verse 17. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wants them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts but one body. So you can see this is a metaphor that Paul's describing. Just like the body has different parts, it's got nose, ears, eyes, the, the body has different parts. We, the body of Christ, the spiritual community, we have many parts. We are many individuals all in one family, in one community. And so let me share the big idea today. The big idea in this message is that you have a God-given calling. As a member of this body, as part of the church, you have a God-given calling on your life. And I want to recognize that you may be here today and you haven't committed your life to following Jesus. Maybe you've got some questions. Maybe you have some doubts or things you're seeking out about faith. I want to tell you I'm glad that you're here and that God loves you for who you are. And you have a purpose in your life. And even if you doubt it, God has a calling on your life. And so as we continue today, we're going to imagine that our God-given calling is a gift, that this box, this gift represents our God-given calling. When you come to faith in Jesus and you put your trust in him and you're following Jesus, he gives you a gift. It's your God-given calling. Now, I want to be very clear about what I mean when I use the word calling, because there can be some misconceptions or misunderstanding about the word calling. Very simply, your calling is God's purpose for you to bring him glory. 
That's it. Your calling is God's purpose for you to bring him glory. There are many people who build up a lot of anxiety about, oh man, what is my purpose? What is my calling? I need to get this college degree and then this graduate degree and find this career. Like, what does God want me to do? My calling for the next 50 years. And I just want to just dispel that anxiety and say, your calling is simply God's purpose for you to bring him glory. Sometimes people try to uh, they'll list out like a, like a mission statement or a purpose statement for their life, which is great, but our calling is not that simple. And if you're hoping that by the end of the message today, you can write out a sentence like, I, Andrew, am called by God to go forth and accomplish this, I'm probably going to disappoint you today. Because God does not always lay out a blueprint for your entire life. God does not always show you the next 10 steps of your life, but he will show you the next step. And today we're going to uncover each layer of our calling. And with that being said, I also want to say that your calling is not always your career. Your calling may be different than the job you hold and how you pay the bills. Now, there are some people who do have a calling and a career that are together. I was speaking to an educator last week, and this person said, Andrew, I am called into education. This is what God made me for. This is my purpose. And that's great. But for many of us, our calling and our career are not the same. I know many crossroaders who are called to lead small groups, to be in ministry, but they have day jobs in the marketplace, in sales, in the service industry. Did you know that nearly every person who stands on this platform that plays an instrument or who leads us in singing and worship, nearly every one of them are not an employee of Crossroads. Many of them have jobs in, uh, in the corporate world. Some of them are students, but they have a God-given calling as worship leaders for this body. You have a God-given calling. So how do we uncover more of our calling? How do we live into our calling? Well, I want to say that our calling is like a gift. With many layers of wrapping paper, we understand more of our God-given calling as we unwrap each layer. As you follow Jesus one step at a time, each step's going to give you more understanding of your calling. And so we're going to unwrap this gift today. And the first thing I want to say, the first uh, layer we're going to unwrap is that you are created for your calling. You are created for your calling. God has designed you for your God-given calling. He's given you a personality. He's given you gifts, skills, abilities, experiences. He's created you for your calling. Let's continue reading our passage in 1 Corinthians 12. Uh, notice what verse 21 says. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. The head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And the parts that we think are less honorable, we treat with honor. And the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty. While our presentable parts need no special treatment. Now notice this next phrase in verse 24. But God has put the body together, giving greater honor to the parts that lacked it, so that there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. It says God has put the body together. So remember the metaphor here of the human body. God has created eyes so that the human body can see. God's created ears so that the human body can hear. In the same way, God has created you for this body of believers. God has created you for this community. God has created you for this church. He's created you as one part of the whole body. Over the years, I've discovered more about my uh, calling and, and what God's created me for, and, and I've learned and grown in the abilities he's created me with. I have also discovered that there are some roles God did not create me for. For example, a few years ago, a team of volunteers at Crossroads uh, were working on a construction project in one of our kids' zone rooms. And one of the volunteers invited me to come help with this construction project. 
Now, you need to understand one thing about me in construction. I do not get along with power tools and construction projects. I have failed or hurt myself every time I try a DIY project at home. But I didn't want to be rude, and I wanted to support this group, so I said yes, and I showed up to volunteer. That Saturday morning, I saw this team of crossroaders working together. There were some that were hammering nails. There was one that was uh, using the saw to cut lumber. Another one had uh, electrical experience. They were running electrical wires and boxes. They were all working together. And then there was me, the preacher, the pastor. And a volunteer handed me some nails and a hammer and showed me where to start working. And so I was very careful to line up the the nail and the hammer. I started hammering away at this nail and I hammered it so good that I bent the nail and I couldn't get it out. So a volunteer came over and in one motion pulled it out and told me to start over. So I started working again, this time being very careful not to bend the nail. I was concentrating and I started hammering, but this time I missed the nail and hit my finger. And then my finger started to bleed. Not just a little scratch. It started to bleed a lot. And I was a little embarrassed. So I tried to hide it and like put my hand in my pocket and keep working away. But everybody saw that I'd hurt myself. And a volunteer came over and said something like, Andrew, for your own safety, I'm confiscating your hammer. (laughs) That's when I learned that I am not created for construction projects. But that team of volunteers, they are created for roles like that. You are created for your God-given calling. Notice what Paul says in verse 18. In fact, God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. God has placed every one of you the way that he wants you to be. He's created you just as he wants you. So you need to ask yourself, what skills or abilities do you have? Maybe you have music skills, teaching skills, or or leadership skills. Maybe there's a role for you as leading your small group in worship, or leading the discussion, or teaching an equipping class. Maybe you have different skills. Maybe you have incredible organizational skills and administrative skills that can be used behind the scenes in ministry. Or maybe you don't have talents like that, but has God given you resources? Maybe God's given you a house that can host a small group. Maybe God's given you money that can fund ministry. Or maybe you have a network of connections for serving opportunities. On the other hand, many of us are created with unique availability. Don't miss this. Don't discount this. Maybe you have unique availability in your schedule for a role and a calling that God has. I know one crossroader who has availability during the week when their uh, children are at preschool during the day, they use that availability to meet with newcomers to their small group or to help with behind the scenes things for ministry. I know a second crossroader who's temporarily unemployed and they're using this availability to volunteer at one of our after school programs. How has God created you? How has God built you for your calling? He's designed you just the way he wants you. If you want to learn more about how God's created you, there's an action step here. I encourage you to, uh, to use the Crossroads assessment tool that we've put together for this series. You can find it online or in the app. and It'll ask you a number of questions about your personality, your interests, your experience to help you learn more about how God created you. So like I said earlier, Your God-given calling is a gift, and and we are unwrapping layers. And the next layer to your God-given calling is that your calling provides clarity. Your calling provides clarity. We all need to see clearly what God has called us to, what role and calling he has for us. I want us to keep reading in 1 Corinthians 12. Let's look at verse 27. In this part, Paul is actually going to list out practical roles and callings in the body of Christ. Verse 27 says, Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is part of it. 
And God has placed in the church, first of all, apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then miracles, then gifts of healing, of helping, of guidance, and different kinds of tongues. And then look at verse 29. Are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, do all work miracles, do all have gifts of healing, do all speak in tongues, now eagerly desire the greater gifts? Paul is saying here, there are many roles and callings. And I want to say that this list that he describes, prophets, teachers, apostles, it is not the be-all, end-all list. It's just some examples. There are a number of callings and opportunities and roles. And the point that he's making here is that not one of us is called to all the roles. And not every role is for every person. So that's why we need clarity. We need to see clearly where God is calling us. Because if we don't have clarity, think about what could happen. If we all thought that we were all supposed to be preachers, oh my, we would just be, be talking at each other. If we all thought we were supposed to be worship leaders, well, we'd be competing for time on the platform. And if we were all called to be uh, prayer leaders, we would never talk to each other because we'd be busy praying. We need clarity. This makes me think about my friend Darian. Darian's been around Crossroads almost all of his life. And a few years ago, Darian joined our staff as a middle school youth pastor. And Darian has been growing in his calling. And during that time, he was uh, also studying in college uh, psychology. And it's very clear that God had called Darian to serve. And then the next layer was God calling him to serve young people. And then the next layer that Darian saw, the clarity that he saw, is that God is calling him to serve young people in the inner city, in an urban context. And so he started seeking for clarity. And Darian thought, maybe this means being a youth pastor at an inner city church. And he thought, well, maybe it means volunteering at an urban uh, outreach ministry. But that wasn't it. As he sought more clarity, he realized that God was calling him to be a, a city of Pittsburgh police officer. And he actually starts his training this year at the academy. Now, does that mean that Darian was not called to be a middle school youth pastor? No. Does that mean that Darian was not, is never going to be called to be a counselor or work in psychology? No. It just means that in this season, in this part of his life, the next layer is this next part of his calling. The clarity that he's received is this next step. We all need clarity. We need to see what God's created and called us to do. And I want to say that you may be in a season right now that you've been operating in a certain role for a while. Don't be surprised if God opens a new role or a new opportunity in a new season. Sometimes our roles and our callings will change as we uncover more layers. So you may discover that when you pray for people, you see God working in their lives. Well, maybe God is calling you to be the prayer leader in your small group. Maybe God has not called you to lead a small group, but maybe you've got a unique ability and you've got clarity that God has called you to bring and invite new people to that group who need to meet Jesus. Now, maybe you are a small group leader and you know that this is what God's called you to do. This is your role. Well, don't be surprised if the next layer, God is calling you to train some more small group leaders and start coaching multiple groups, not just one. We need this clarity. And here's the beautiful thing about when we unwrap clarity about our calling, it allows you to say yes to the new opportunities and it helps you say no to the things that are not for you. We need this clarity. And so I would recommend an action step here. If you're seeking clarity, um, take a look at the Crossroads ministry menu. It's on the app. It's in the lobby. It has a variety of roles, opportunities, descriptions of serving positions. Check it out. Maybe there's some clarity there. The best way to find clarity is to start trying things. Sometimes it's just simple, good old-fashioned trial and error. Try this, try that, learn more about that, and you'll find the clarity that you need. So do you see how each layer of our calling as we follow Jesus is revealing more about what God's calling us to? And the next layer that we're going to unwrap is that your calling makes you a contributor.
Your calling makes you a contributor. And this is the sweet spot. This is what God has made every person for. You have a contributing role in the body of Christ. When you are a contributor, this is when you realize, man, this is how God's created me. I've got clarity about my next step. And it's life-giving. You get energy from being a contributor, from operating in your gifts and operating in your role. It, it may be exhausting uh, physically, but spiritually and emotionally, you are energized and you are thriving because this is where God has called you to. It may be challenging, but you know, that you can see in the big picture, this is how you're contributing to God's greater mission. I want us to return to 1 Corinthians 12 and look closely at verse 25 one more time. Paul writes, there should be no division in the body, but its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices. Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. We all have a part in this body. We all have something to contribute to one another. We are one body made up of many parts. And when you realize that you are a contributor, then you're in the sweet spot where God has made you and called you to. As I've been reflecting on this message and thinking about you, something that I've come to understand is that God has a God-given calling on your life. And when we start unwrapping each layer, we're going to experience more of God and more of his presence. Now, sometimes we can fall into different categories outside of contributor. And I want to say that in the church, some are critics, some are consumers, and some are contributors. Earlier, Paul wrote about the critics. He wrote, the eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. That sounds like a critic. A critic in the church is somebody who judges and criticizes contributors for growing in their gifts or testing out ministry and operating in ministry. Do not listen to the critics. Focus on Jesus and continue to unwrap each layer that he's called you to. Now the consumers, they're a little less vocal, a little more quiet. Consumers are sometimes more anonymous. Consumers may be faithful to attend weekly worship. They may be a part of a group. But consumers are more focused on themselves. They're, they're focused on their needs, their desires, and what they can get. On the other hand, contributors, they're in the sweet spot. This is where God has designed you. He's designed you as a contributor. A contributor is growing to become more like Jesus. They're serving, operating in their gifts. And a contributor is filled with joy because they're fulfilling what God has called them to. And here's the interesting thing. A contributor may share the similar opinions as a critic, but they're actively making improvements and changes and helping the body, not just criticizing from a distance. Consumer, contributors may have similar desires as consumers, but contributors realize that they are fulfilled by contributing. And I just want to say, in order to be a contributor, it does not mean you've got everything figured out. It does not mean that you've got a five-point mission statement for your life and, and you've got all the Bible knowledge and you know for the next 50 years, this is my calling. To be a contributor simply means that you're following Jesus one step at a time, that you're unwrapping each layer of your calling. Maybe you're trying out a new role. Maybe you're taking a step of faith into a new opportunity. You're just obeying Jesus. That's what makes you a contributor. And so I encourage you, as you look at your life, if you're not contributing, take the next step. Unwrap the next layer. Because remember, your God-given calling is a gift. And gifts are wonderful. Gifts are good. God has an incredible plan for you and a calling. Start unwrapping it. I'd like to share a quote with you that I hope is encouraging. Author Chuck Swindoll once wrote, you will never bring as much glory to God as when you are doing what he created and gifted you to do. Exercise the gifts you have been given and take hold of the opportunities for ministry that have been placed before you. When you realize that you have something to offer the body, it makes you a contributor. And you discover more of God 
and you become more like Jesus. I'm sure that many of you are really hoping that I'm going to finish unwrapping this and show you what's inside this gift. You may even have some ideas about what could be inside of here. Well, I'm not going to finish unwrapping it because that's not the point today. The real gift is what God has put inside of you. And I can't unwrap that for you. Only you can unwrap that one layer at a time, one step at a time. And remember, your God-given calling is not some conclusion. It's not some tightly fabricated sentence or mission statement. Your God-given calling is not about getting to a destination or a finish line. It's a journey. It's a journey of following Jesus one step at a time, make, knowing him and making him known. It's a journey of obeying him one layer at a time. And so I encourage you, take the next step. Unwrap the next layer. In these next few moments, I'd like for us to enter a moment of prayer and reflection. Because I believe that maybe right now, this is a moment of clarity for some of you here. That perhaps God is revealing something about your God-given calling. Maybe a new layer, maybe a new step. So if you will, join me in this moment of prayer and allow God to speak to your heart and your mind. Father God, I want to pray against anxiety or fear and I want to ask for more of your peace in every heart and every mind. There is peace in your presence, God. And Lord, if there is something that you want to show us, a new layer, a next step, we are open. Father, thank you for calling us, calling us to yourself. And thank you for the greatest gift, who is your son, Jesus. Lord, I pray for each person here today that you will continue to reveal more about who you created them to be, who you've called them to be. And we pray these things in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen.